Hello, and we say good day to you at this moment of your time. It is a pleasure, it is an honor to establish contact with you in this way. We are the Pleiadian Council, and we speak on behalf of the Galactic Alliance and many other beings supporting the world in this process you call Ascension. Thank you for allowing us this opportunity to meet you and co-create with you, for it is a window into your world that acts like a mere reflection for us and expanding and getting to experience more and more of all that is in the same way that we offer you a mere reflection and an opportunity to raise your frequency and access these new perspectives. So it is a gift for both of us to experience this co-creation and we may continue then with, first of all, Reminding those of you who may not yet have met us that we offer this formula to each and every one of you. Act upon your highest passion to the best of your ability without insisting on an outcome. To act upon your passion means to step into your heart in every single moment, literally every single moment, and ask yourself out of everything you could do with your energy, what elicits the greatest response of love from your heart? Act upon it in the best way you can. To the best of your ability means to use all of the resources within you and available to you externally to follow through with that action in the very most precise way. Finally, release all insistence on a particular outcome. Let go of your attachment to what happens and simply explore Use experiences that you don't prefer as lessons that will inform you as to how to act upon your passion with more awareness and discernment and understanding the next time. And be open to the pathway forking off to lead you in a better direction. Because so much of the time that you think you are heading to one particular destination, you are just being guided intuitively by that passion that is there to bring you to a fork in the road that you didn't even know was a possibility when you set out on your journey. And if you get so attached to your original perceived destination, you won't be able to move onto that new pathway that leads to something even grander. This is the basics of what we teach, and it can literally be applied to every single aspect of your life. Now, today we want to introduce a new concept to all of our audience, and that is a deepening exploration of what it means to act, certain nuances of the ways that you can execute your passion, and we ensue with this new acronym, ACT. ACT represents authenticity, confidence, consistency, and transparency. When you act with these four things, you will guarantee that you accelerate your process of clarification and transformation for yourself and for your entire planet. So let's speak briefly about what these four things mean. Authenticity means that you act in a way that is true to yourself. It means that you get deeply in touch with what you prefer and what you desire and what you believe and you make that a priority. Authenticity is actually quite uncommon in your world because so many of you learn to have certain ways of fitting into the acceptable perception by others around you. And so for many of you, authenticity will feel as if you are rebelling. For some of you, authenticity will be literally rebelling. And for all of you, authenticity will feel like you are returning to yourself and taking off a mask. So in order to really tap into authenticity, you have to ask yourselves questions like, if. I didn't care about anyone else's opinion of me, what would I do? If I lived in a random new place without knowing anyone, what would I do with my life? If I didn't need the support of this and that other person, how would I act? Authenticity is a return to your sense 
of individuality. And of course, you are interdependent beings connected with so many other beings in your world and relying on them in so many ways. Though, when you don't live with authenticity, sometimes you are relying on people that are not really a match to your frequency. And that process of transformation requires that you break connection with those individuals to establish new authentic connections with those that actually share your interests and values. And you won't actually be able to create those connections until you develop authenticity. The next step is confidence. Confidence means to trust in yourself, to believe in yourself, and to step courageously forward despite your fear. You don't have to be fearless in order to be confident. You only have to be willing to take those steps forward. Confidence is something that all of you have within you. It is not something that you have to seek outside of yourself for. And all you really need is to be brave, to be courageous, to learn how to neutralize the fear that you're feeling and act accordingly despite it. To be confident, you have to recognize that what is authentic to you is important and is valid. Because so many of you have received conditioning and received ideas that make you feel as if who you are is not important, or your unique preferences don't really matter, and that the subtle nuances of life that make life the most meaningful and joyful for you are not important in the grand scheme of all of the things that you have to do in order to survive or in order to fit in. So confidence means shedding all of those notions and recognizing, again, if it matters to you, it matters to the universe. Because what matters to you is deeply important. And as long as you are acting upon things and bringing in new aspects of your life that are deeply meaningful for you, you should feel very confident doing it. It should feel natural and you should recognize that again, when it is in alignment with that formula and it brings out that deep love and joy, nothing you could desire could ever be wrong. Now, the second C, consistency, means simply to establish this as a pattern because all habits and all beliefs work cyclically and it is very easy to get undermined by negative beliefs because they loop, they repeat, and you have to learn how to interrupt them at every new cycle. Every time you find an old pattern or an old negative belief, interfering with your behavior again, you have to remember consistency and know that every single moment you have that opportunity to break the cycle, to break the pattern, and to do something differently, you are changing the entire fabric of your being, you are changing who you are, and you are changing this reality for everyone else. Consistency means to make these principles something that you live by every single day and in every single moment. Consistency means that you continually ask yourself, am I being authentic? Am I being real? Am I honoring myself and what I need and want in this moment? And to not tolerate moments in which you go outside of what is authentic to you because every single moment you do that, you're setting up that as a pattern. Everything you do is inviting a repeat performance of that very action. There is nothing that stops and ends here because everything is a part of the bigger framework of reality. And so everything that you do is destined to repeat until you interfere it with it by doing something differently. And consistency will cultivate naturally from you when you recognize this that there is no one-off. There are only frameworks that set you up for a continued exploration of newer cycles. The last part of this acronym is transparency. And it is the last part because 
you need to first have that solid framework of authenticity, knowing what's right for you, confidence, trusting in yourself, and consistency, being able to watch and observe yourself, and hold yourself accountable to continuously act accordingly to your own authenticity. And then you can start to notice where there might be negative holding patterns. You might notice where there might be fears distorting what you are doing. Transparency means to allow yourself to be visibly human. And so many of you attempt to present images of some sort of perfection because that is what has been prescribed as admirable in your world. And you use this distorted image in order to gain love. Transparency becomes easy when you recognize that when you present a distorted image, you receive distorted love. The love that you receive by presenting a distorted image is not the love for the real you, it is the love for the distorted you. And therefore, it will never actually reach the deepest parts of you. And so this transparency is the most radical act of self-love in being able to let go of all of the false notions of who you ought to be and stepping into complete surrender and complete love for who you actually are. This formula of ACT is a new nuance to the formula that we will continue to explore in our transmissions from for some time to come, and we hope you enjoy it and can explore it and embody it in your own way, knowing that as you do this, you're allowing everybody else to embody this understanding as well. And as all of you in your world become more authentic and confident and consistent and transparent, everything in your reality will change because these frequencies are so missing in your society. And the way that people are exploited and subverted is only possible because you have been convinced to abandon yourselves in so many ways. We thank you for allowing us to share this message with you at this time, and we in return ask in which ways can we support you with your questions, dialogues, musings, and sharings, beginning whenever you wish. that has been done to me where I have been sexually violated by a male and understand that boundary that was crossed and how I was sexually violated. What can I learn? What can I do with that? Well, it is, yes, a deep violation and having deep self-compassion is the first step in the process, which you are already doing. And the further steps are reclaiming your power, recognizing that this is part of a collective phenomena of the subversion of some and the entitlement of others to be able to make that choice to violate other people. Going through this is part of that collective process. As you reclaim your power and reclaim your voice, it enables so many others to do the same. The act of sharing this story and sharing the emotions of rage and sadness that have resulted from this is all part of that healing process and that journey. Know that there is an end and it can bring you then to be a person with stronger boundaries, with stronger intuition, with more awareness of how to say no early into situations and avoid 
those who might have these sorts of energies. Reclaiming your power is also, yes, sharing the story and supporting that collective process of making it unsafe for predators to do what they're doing. How are you feeling in this moment? Relieved. Yes. Because I got the exact confirmation that I've had on a conscious spiritual level. I got the download that you have confirmed for me now. Oh. Well, we thank you. And yes, we're glad we can reflect that inner awareness. Thank you. Can we support you in any other way? All right, our thanks to you, yes. I have a specific previous life in Egypt that I would like to access all right and connect with but i don't know how to do that have you attempted past life regression meditation no all right we would start with that there are many available for you there are many different methods of this sort of meditation you can even listen to them online and you can practice using your imagination to bring yourself into this regression state and know that once you start this process, it'll be easier and easier to go into that regression mode and recall many memories. I also guess I have a fear of seeing something about that life and that version of myself um that's scary or that i don't like and i don't know if that's even real well like i don't know if i know that i was a person with a lot of abilities and power and so you might be resistant to seeing a misuse of that power yeah yes no nope. Why would you resist that? It is not reflective of what you are doing here and now. It is only a memory. It reflects to you what you don't like in the world. Yet, you might have found yourself on the flip side in situations in which others abused the power they had over you. And this created that resistance. So that is the natural karmic balance as you own the two polarities and see how your soul is intertwined with both of them and let go of the resistance to them. You will become more aware of the presence of the misuse of power and you will be able to interrupt the cycle when you find yourself on either side of that role. So always know that unless what you are resisting is something that could potentially physically endanger you, almost all of your resistance is something to open yourself to dissolve. That is the setting, the intention of Opening to... Open to it and practice a past life meditation and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, I just felt like jumping off a cliff almost. <laughs> All right. If you want to put it that way, it could be that way. Though, recognize that it is your own 
beliefs that make it seem that intense. Yeah. Because all it is is expanding your awareness. Yeah. All right, we thank you, yes. <sighs> Somebody else would like to ask something or share something. I would like to ask. Yeah. Um, now that we're speaking about a previous life, um, often it is um, referred to in spiritual practices that everything is one. Yes. And I'm thinking that is there a connection between what previous life we experienced and uh, Somehow, haven't we experienced the same previous life, all of us? Mm -hmm. And what, why is it that we are connected to that one? Uh, or? Yes, well, every soul is part of an over-soul. And sometimes you have concurrent soul incarnations, meaning there are other people out there that are also a part of that same over-soul. The over-soul conglomerates many souls, and within that oversoul are your past or future lifetimes. They are only past or future because of your limited perception of linear time. From our perspective, from a higher dimensional perspective, everything is happening here and now, and time and space are only a waking illusion that is possible to experience within certain dimensions. And so, yes, you share these other lifetimes with other individuals, certainly. Though you individually establish contact with the souls within your oversoul that are relevant to you based upon resonant energies. So the beliefs and patterns playing out in your life will help you to establish contact with the most similar and relevant soul aspects in the so-called past and future. As you change and transform as a soul and your vibrational frequency changes, you might establish contact with different soul aspects, a part of that oversoul. So your past and future lifetimes are constantly shifting as you constantly shift as well. And there are typically hundreds of thousands of soul aspects within the context of one oversoul. And so you are establishing contact with some of them at some points, and as the course of your life progresses, you shift very often between which soul aspects you connect with and co-create with. So there are different overlaps between the there are many oversouls out there. Yes, there are some several hundred thousand oversouls on the planet represented. Yes. Yeah. In the simplest terms, yes. I have another question. Um, I'm wondering why my soul chose Denmark because I don't feel <clears throat> I don't feel a strong connection uh, in some sense or a sense of um, home. There are many different reasons. You chose this at a soul level. 
Some are past life connections. Others are aspects of this particular culture you might take for granted. There are certain levels of ease, there are certain levels of challenge. Your soul was very interested in both the ease and the challenge. I discovered that I had the spirit back in the Nevis or Kabul. Um, I kind of I feel much more at home when I when I think about the pyramids and the little pictures and imagine that I'm. Well, we can only say that you wouldn't really prefer to be a woman in Egypt right now. So, you might have fantastical imaginations about what it was like back then, but it's a very different world right now. Mm. Yeah, so it's like a new adventure. Yes. New challenges. And what your resistance is to is not necessarily Denmark, but is to the modern world and the matrix, as you might say. being that is like dark this darkness um that has been around me i've seen it sometimes or it's followed me around my mother has seen it seen it in her dreams and she's told me this uh dark kind of silhouette man she said is is uh, he was walking around with you and you were just so calm and said it's okay just let him be he doesn't do anything and when she said that, I knew that was true because I had seen him before and I had felt him before. And now I think him because that's how the presence feels. And I'm curious because I feel like this is an expression of a shadow that needs to be transmuted, looked at, transformed. I'm trying to understand what this is. How long has it been around? Uh, I felt it strongly for a year was it there before the experience of violation or after after it is One moment. You have taken on a part of your violator's energy by letting go of some of your own power in the process. This has allowed some aspect of him to stick around in your own field. And so through your healing process, you will reclaim that energy and gradually demand for this energy to leave. So you might feel as if it is okay for it to be around, though gradually start to notice this shadow and bring light to it. The light that you are bringing is the light of your own soul, the light of your own power, pushing this being not necessarily away, but into the light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I 
get it because it's like this experience I recently had with this person who sexually violated me is like this shadow presenting itself again and like wanting to be looked at and my soul wanting to take my power back. Yes. Oh, more thanks to you, yes. I have a question. Yes. Um, I think recently, for a couple of months, I have somehow stepped into a fear. Normally, I don't have fear in my life, but this fear seems like like a pattern I have taken on from my father or something. Yes. It's about economy, and it's, and it's so difficult to get out of. I can kind of look at it, but uh, I'm kind of um, it catch me somehow. Yes. I was, I was wondering what to do about it. Um, if you can suggest anything. Be aware of it. All you need to do is be aware of it mm -hmm. and notice its presence and recognize that despite perhaps real evidence yes. for the possibility of economic change economy does not equate to abundance and shifting your awareness to an expanded view of abundance noticing everything you do have the fact that it would be very difficult for you to lose these things. You might have to choose to put yourself at extreme adverse risk to lose your abundance. Abundance also manifests as a network of friends and family and support. Abundance manifests as a supportive government. Abundance manifests as the ability to exchange resources. Abundance manifests as so many different things and economy is not necessarily abundance. Many of you will have to do this in these times and recognize that there will always be a way for you to meet your needs despite what happens with the money or the finances. That end, recognize that global shifts are moving in the direction of a more supportive world and a more unified world and sometimes there will have to be processes of witnessing how fractured the world is and how flawed certain systems are in order to move in that direction. So with this fear of lack, however, in general, the best thing to do is to notice that this perception of lack is flawed and false by shifting your awareness to notice all of the possibility and all of the abundance. And it is this gradual mindset shift that requires that continual choice of shifting your focus from the perceived lack into the perceived abundance. But you cannot do that if you abandon your awareness of the fear. Mm -hmm. So the first step is then acknowledging it in order to shift your awareness. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I have a question. Yes. I feel like I am somehow blocking myself from moving forward. Yes. Um, in relation to what I, in my core, feel I should be doing, if we should put a word on it, work-wise. All right. Um, and I can't really figure out what the blocking is about and how to release it. Do you have any suggestions to how to work towards finding what is blocking or? Do you know what you want to do? Yeah, not like specifically, specifically, but I know that I do not want to do what I do now. Well, then you don't actually know what you want. You know that you don't want what you're doing. And there's a big difference. True. So it starts then with in the moments where you have that free time, choose the things that excite you the very most. Choose what 
fills you with love again and again consistently and let that carry you forward. You may not completely get rid of the things that you don't prefer right away, but in the time that you have free, when you choose the things that fill you with love, you will be able to deepen into those experiences. So the real thing to watch out for is the filler space, where you do things that, in a sense, create mental chatter that is distracting or simply take up time without really providing substance in your life. Notice these things and cut them out quickly and instead challenge yourself to do things that really push you past the, your perceived limits and offer you that expanded heart state of love. When you do things that you love, eventually your skill will get better and you will be able to then derive abundance from doing the things you love. But you first have to allocate much more time for doing those things that you love. And then you will know what you really want to do. So doing things that I love more will also help me define the things that I should be doing. Yes. Yeah. They're synonymous. The things you love are the things that you should be doing. Mm. But again, should implies obligation, and obligation always restricts joy. It isn't that you have to do them. It isn't that you should do them. It is that the things that you love are the only way to expand into a greater state of love. And if that's what you want, then that's the only way to get there. But as soon as you say should, ought to, must, you add that energy of insistence into the equation that creates a, a tightening right away. So notice what happens when you say those words to yourself or think those thoughts to yourself. And instead of forcing yourself to do things you love, do them just because you love them. Do you see what we're saying? Yes. All right, yes. Thank you. Oh, well, thanks to you. I have something to share on the throat chakra and questions that are connected and linked to my voice and boundaries and communication and also that shadow and the sexualization like it's all interconnected and I see it and I experienced also part of the shadow of that it looks like a personification of I guess wound of this person uh, around me that's following me around sometimes and I also see a lot of my ex-boyfriends I feel linked to him in some like soul way or like Feel like the strings the energetic strings are still linked and i don't want them to be linked i want to be able to cut the energetic strings because i truly want to be able to move forward in love towards myself and towards him and we're no longer together and at the same time i found myself being extremely gaslit and extremely manipulated and controlled every time i have shared my voice and i have been empowered in my truth and told them how I truly feel and every time every time it would be a deep sense of denial from his side so you don't need this definition of closure that your society has created for some reason closure is a concept it's not a reality so let go of it entirely closure begins when you step away you decide when a chapter is closed and trying to convince someone else of your truth can actually happen everyone lives within their own framework and perception of reality and if you need another person to change in order to find closure you chain yourself to the other person you only free yourself to the other person when you no longer care at all what they think and how they feel. If somebody repeatedly shows you that they don't value you and they don't want you to support you in your own freedom, you need to actually cut this person out of your life entirely. So if you want to free yourself from these kinds of energies, 
Stop talking to them. Stop thinking about them. Remove every artifact and trace of their energy from your life entirely. Can I still be... I don't want to be friends with, with Leon, like my ex now, but there is kind of this sense in me that just feels deeply in my soul that he deserves love and that he deserves to be held, loved, Everyone deserves love. Exactly. Valued. Everyone. But he doesn't deserve it from you. Mm. He's already proven that he doesn't deserve your love. Mm. Right. And you can have unconditional love. You can send him sources love through your channel. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you need to give him love in the form of your time, your energy, your words. I don't have to give my power away. From yes. Time. Because all of those things, time, words, energy... Mm are expressions of your power. Mm -hmm. Keep them to yourself. Mm -hmm. If they, if your power is not valued and not equally reciprocated, don't share it. Yes. And you won't have unhealthy attachments and unhealthy cords. Yeah. And the same goes for like boundary setting in connection to this. It's like, I have had this deep misconception within myself that I'm this like, in order to be loving, kind, this light being that I cannot, there are certain ways that I need to communicate a boundary. So sometimes I've tried communicating a boundary, but I've said it in such like this loving, kind, uh, patient way that the person just violates it immediately. Yes. And I've had this misconception that, oh, I can't be tough. I can't say things like, no, don't do it. Or like, you know, with this kind of tone of voice, like very firm and very grounded because I've had a misconception that that comes from I don't know what it is, but I've just thought... Well, imagine the other person is a dog. Mm -hmm. How would you communicate a boundary with a dog? Dogs don't understand your language. They understand how you say it. Mm -hmm. And all of you have that primitive part active. Mm -hmm. Even though you have this logical, rational mind, if you try to say something in such a soothing way, what they will feel first is that soothing energy. Save that energy for yourself and be as brutal as you need to be. Mm. It is not causing any harm. Mm -hmm. It's only an act of love for yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's not a distortion of love that I'm very no. firm and harsh. It is an expansion of your love for self. Wow. And especially in these cases in which you're dealing with literal parasitic energies, mm -hmm. this is the only way to move forward. Mm -hmm. And I can still, I'm still, I'm choosing love. Yes, and you myself. can still be a channel of higher spiritual unconditional love for them. Mm -hmm. But that energy won't express through your voice in the same way. Mm -hmm. And yes, it requires a release of that identity that you are this embodiment of a certain sort of soft spirituality. Right, right. It's opening yourself to be manifold in how you embody the divine. Just like in these different pantheons, the same goddess expresses in a soft form and in a fierce form. Mm -hmm. The same goddess that offers love cuts off heads in another incarnation. Mm -hmm. Can you be both? Yes. All right then. <laughs> I can. <laughs> thanks. Yes, I thanks to you. I have a question. Yes. Yes. I'm curious to know what that's about and, and how to unblock it. Do you own your desires? No. So that's what the pain is. It is all of the thoughts and beliefs that you put in between yourself and your desires. Mm. It is the shame, it is the guilt you have about wanting what you want. And so in order to move through that pain, you have to make it safe to want what you want. Understand that every desire is there for a reason. I feel that um, I've been in contact with some past lives where I've been in some religious, uh, yeah, some religions where it was not okay to follow my desire. Yes. Um, how do I work with that? Well, understand again that because of resonant frequencies, you 
establish contact with these sort of monastic and renunciate incarnations. So in order to break those ties, you have to break those vows in the present. Acknowledge any of your own beliefs and thoughts that make this sort of renunciate life seem better. And again, open your mind to see all of the ways in which living as a renunciate isn't useful for you this time around. Acknowledge that this renunciation of pleasure or sexuality was useful to these past versions of yourself, but this energy doesn't need to carry into the here and now. Cut ties and step into the present moment, recognizing that this past doesn't have to live with you in the present. And you can retain the memory without retaining the energy frequency. Mm -hmm. Let it go back to its time and space and start affirming, I love my sexuality. I love my desire. I love my pleasure. Pleasure is an expression of spirit. Desire is an expression of spirit. Sex is an expression of spirit. And let these affirmations be new frequencies that reverberate through you every day and continue to cultivate that awareness of this center and all of your body to breathe new life and new awareness into a new version of yourself. You can do sorts of past life regression meditation. Mm -hmm. Though, again, those affirmations would be enough. Cutting the ties doesn't have to be so complex. You can create your own ritual that would affirm it to you in your own way. But remember that every time you begin a new pattern and do things a different way, you are cutting the ties. Well, you have to look at these definitions of purity. So what would be impure about desire, sexuality, or pleasure? Because literally you wouldn't exist without these forces. So is it wrong to exist? Is it wrong that you were born? Is it wrong that new babies are born all the time? Yes. So all you have to do is undo these old definitions of what purity is. Mm -hmm. And purity can be indulgence because exploring your senses is part of why you came here. You didn't come here to deny them. The only negative aspect of pleasure is when desire controls you. In other words, somebody doesn't have any awareness that they can say no to their desire and that their desire could take them too far. Yet that has never been your experience. For you instead, you resist the, the desire when the desire is there for a reason. So own the desire, enjoy it, and recognize everyone is governed by desire. And your world works because people desire things. No one would take any action if they didn't have desire. And this natural way that you are drawn towards pleasure is part of what makes you human. And pleasure is a healing force. Most of the time, what feels good has a healing effect. It's only when you exaggerate that feel good so much that you avoid negative emotion that desire starts to control you. So more thanks to you, yes. So what is the misconception about, I feel like it's a misconception about 
goddess energy, femininity, the woman, is that it has to be soft, that it has to be sweet, kind, you know, the misconception of the world trying to put the woman in a box so she's giving her power away and she cannot be empowered in her true force, which is also the fierceness and the the harshness and the big no and the exactly what we we're talking about before. So I guess I can just purely eliminate that fully and just be like, if I disagree with someone, I can be like, no. This yeah. do 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 do, and I can still own my pure femininity, goddess energy, and divinity, and I'm acting out of love. Yes. Wow, that's a, that's a hard one for me. <laughs> well, recognize that this concept of femininity is largely a construct yeah. that was designed by those in great fear at times in which survival was much more challenging the concept of people as property gave a sense of safety to those with power thus by making the woman something more docile more soft the woman served as a piece of property that could preserve the wealth of the family because family would not exist without women. Therefore, if you make the foundation of family soft and easy, then it's very easy from that fear-based definition to have family. So you have to recognize that so many of these concepts are simply built around those old ways of seeing things in different times. Recognize you're in very different times now, and this doesn't mean that you still can't be soft and gentle and receptive. It does not mean that that is not, in a sense, a yin and therefore feminine energy. It simply means the idea that women must be that is a patriarchal concept designed to control. Mm. You can be that, and you can also be the opposite of that. Because naturally, everyone contains one frequency and its opposite. You are this and that. You wouldn't be gentle if you did not have a fierce side. So own your complex nature and know that gentleness informs fierceness and vice versa. And you have to have both within you in order to know one. Oh, or thanks to you, yes. So one last question then. I have a question. Yes. Um, I I have an idea that I'm a little new to this planet, maybe. Yes. For this human life. Yes. And I don't really understand what I'm doing here. That's all right. Yeah. I don't know if you have anything to say about that. You do have many connections to star realms and beings from other planets. These connections inform you and you are receiving energy from them. In these other incarnations, things flow much more effortlessly. There are not the same concepts of work and image and so on and so forth that you're so used to in the way your world works now. And so many of these things create a dissonance for you, yet you learn to adjust to them anyway. What would serve you very much is to learn how to remember these connections with your incarnations in different star nations and channel their energy, get familiar with them, know that you are here to be a bridge between those realities and this reality. And by activating that current of energy, it will help you to feel not necessarily more 
similar and accustomed to this world, but more acknowledging what your purpose is to be here in this place that's so different than what your soul history is connected with. So how do I do that? Again, practice past and future life regression meditations. There are abundant amounts of them out there by going into these hypnotic states in which you are in a conscious sort of a dream and intending to have these recollections, they will arise. And also through dreaming? Yes, if you intend that you have these memories arise in your dreams, that is also a very potent area in which you can start to have more of these memories. Our thanks to you as well. And our thanks to each and every one of you for co-creating this interaction and being present to ground this energy into your reality, for bringing yourselves and your truth into the space, for it is a great gift to us and a great gift to all of creation that we are able to reflect these energies with each other and co-create a new higher frequency reality for everyone. Our love and thanks to each and every one of you and a fabulous rest of your evening then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful.